Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning on this Sunday morning, one week before Christmas. Amen. You know what a great song. I always love that song when you sing it. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's a great reminder of even the sacrifice of, of Mary, you know. Mary finally has a son, and, and her son was given to the world. Huh? You know, uh, that's, that's something I really want to talk about today. Also, I want to talk about another gift that was given to the world by the name of John the Baptist. He also was a gift given. As a matter of fact, he was the cousin of Jesus. And uh, let's see, if you looked in your bulletin today, you see the title of our conversation today. But today is, it is the third Sunday of Advent. It's one week before Christmas, believe it or not. And the topic today of the third Advent is liberation of the human race, which is a beautiful thing. You know, Jesus was sent by God to save us all, to liberate us all, to set us free, to shine light in the darkness. And uh, the main character today of our conversation is John the Baptist. John the Baptist is one who received the call. As a matter of fact, I, I believe it was his, his parents before him that received the call for him. Remember when, when um, um, uh, Zechariah was going to have the son and the angel appeared to him and said, uh, uh, your son shall be called John, not Zacharias, um, because he was going to do something new and something different. And he was absolutely called by God. Called by God. And I, I believe that everyone sitting in this room is, is called by God. And I believe that we all have different kinds of calls upon our lives. Some are absolutely called to give their lives completely, like Jesus, like John the Baptist. You know, they both died in their 30s. They fulfilled their call entirely, but they, they, they gave their life entirely to the call. Is, is that extraordinary? I consider it to be extraordinary. 30 years old. Um, I think of, was it Hannah that gave her, her son to the Lord? Samuel, she wanted a boy, a child for so long, and she finally had a child, and God called her to bring that child to the priest, and, and, and Samuel was raised in the church. Samuel lived to be an old man. <laughs> he didn't live in his 30s, but he lived to be an old man, and he watched over the nation Israel. He gave his life entirely to the call of God. And I do believe that there are some in this room today that are called uh, with a special calling, because someone has to carry on the work, Amen. Someone has to live in the church. Someone has to be devoted to God. Someone has to, to be absolutely consecrated and set apart. Somebody needs to set their ear to heaven to hear the voice of heaven. Amen. That they can stand to proclaim it to the rest of us and tell us, please, what, what, what is heaven speaking? We all need someone that we can run to. God always sends someone upon the earth who will watch over and protect he will always send a servant upon the earth who has his ear towards the heaven and can speak the, the things of heaven to the earth. Amen. Yes, we're all called, but I believe some of us are especially called. And there's a price to be paid for sure. And there needs to be an absolute commitment to the call. And sometimes it takes a while to grab hold of that commitment. But we see it uh, in our main character today. Our main character today is John the Baptist. But uh, let us start first, before I go right into John the Baptist, let us start with the introduction to John the Baptist. And that's going to be in the Gospel of John. So why don't you open your Bibles and let's read a little bit today about John the Baptist. So uh, I'm in the King James Version today. The Gospel of John. And let's read it right from the start, verse 1. It reads... In the beginning was the Word, you know this, the Word was with God, you want to read that with me? And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And praise God for verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. I love, I love that King James word. The darkness can't figure out the light. <laughs> you know? I, mean, I mean, the light got the darkness all confused. You think there's, there's confusion in darkness, the light's got it all wrapped up. <laughs> the light leaves darkness in confusion. <laughs> Darkness can't figure out the light because the light is, is it's new, it's fresh, it's a, it's a fresh word from heaven every day. 
It, it speaks things that the earth has a hard time understanding, like, like unconditional love and absolute forgiveness and the divine mercy and grace of God. That this earth has a hard time, you have a hard time, I have a hard time grabbing hold of. Man, the darkness cannot comprehend it, man. My dark days cannot comprehend the goodness of my God. May it always be. May the, may the light always, always overpower uh, and overcome the darkness. Praise the Lord, everybody. So even in this beginning passage, this, this passage, it's the introduction to John the Baptist. But in, the, in this short passage, we see, first of all, that, that, that you read five verses, the word became a person. It started off by saying the word, but then the word turns into he and him. The word became a person, which is Jesus Christ, which is you and me. We are a word of God from the mouth, from his mouth that materialized upon this earth, called by God for absolute purpose. Absolute purpose. We are all, I would say, in this Christmas season, we are all. No matter what anybody says to you, we are all gifts from God. <laughs> We're a gift to this earth. We're a gift to our families, to our neighborhoods. You are. You are a gift. There's a light that shines bright inside of you that, 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 that causes the darkness to become confused and overwhelmed. May it forever be true. May you continue to be that light. May you continue to be the called one in the dark places. Amen. For sure. Also in, the, in this, these short few verses, it says, all things were created by words. That's what it says. And without the word, nothing was created. That's going to be something I want to talk to you about today. Words are very important. Words are everything. And God wants us to use our words with great purpose. How do you save a world? How do you help? How do you love? Very simply, everybody, through words. And you all have them. <laughs> You all have words. It is the breath of God inside your mouth. All things are created by words. God wants to, to show us how our words create, how our words will absolutely liber liberate the human race. The word is life. You ever hear scriptures like this, death and life and the power of the tongue? You know that you can go into places just speaking words and you can change atmospheres. Man, you can change people's hearts. You can change dispositions. You can make a sad person happy. I know you can make a happy person sad. <laughs> but you have enough practice doing that. <laughs> you can make a sad person happy. You, you, you can cause a, a depressed person not to be depressed. Greater than any pills they could offer. You could cause somebody who has just given up to, to cause somebody to say, I have new life and new hope and a new beginning. Your words are very powerful. There's nothing in, in, in all of creation that was not created without the word. Amen. For it says in Genesis 1:1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, God spoke words. And, 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 and just the same Without a word, nothing is created. Your words are important. What you say is important. Nothing is created without you speaking words. Words are life and words are light. Beautiful. Words are light. We're going to speak a little bit today about the power of the word. So this is the introduction to our main character today. Our main character is John the Baptist. And, and, and in this short passage, you look, look at John chapter 1 now in verse 6. It says very simply in verse 6, it says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. John, of course, means grace. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Would you say that verse with me? There was a man sent from God and his name was John. John, I feel the breath of God that has breathed upon that verse for us today. I've been saying it all morning. Coming to church, I've been saying there was a man sent from God, and his name was John. There was a man sent from God, and his name was John. I believe that God has breathed upon that verse for us today. And in this short, short passage here, verse 7, it says, The same came, this is John, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. I love the, the humility of the passage. It says, he was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. 
that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. How many? Every man, every human that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made, what does it say? And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. My goodness, everything that was made was made by the word of God. But yet still somehow creation and the world itself feigns knowledge of God. As if, as if our God is not the most important thing. As if our God is not the breath that we breathe and the air in our lungs. As if there's anything else in life but God. He is everything. Yet, yet the world that was created by him, people that were created by him, it says he came to his own and his own knew him not. Have you ever experienced something like that? Have you ever experienced a love of God or a love for the things of God and you want to share that with someone, but someone just doesn't really, <laughs> that's an interesting, quite honestly. It's like you go to your own, but your own does not know you. Like we're both brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of the same God. He came to the, to the world and, and it says that the world knew him not. How could that be? <sighs> So the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But look at that beautiful, powerful verse that follows. Verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave power to become the sons of God. You can add daughters if you like, but we're all the sons of God. It's gender neutral. Even to them that believe on his name, which were not born of blood, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. To them that believe. I want you to know the power of the word and the power of the word received. God can speak a very powerful word into your life, but if you don't receive it, it has no power. Scripture says, if you believe it, you have the power to become. What do you have to do in regard to the word of God? You just got to grab hold of it and say, that's mine. I want that. Well, then take it. It's all yours. Because those who believe they have the power to become the sons of God. You and I, we could all sit under the same word and some of us could get home, go home just bored out of their minds. And some of us could get home receiving the power of God. Knowing that, that you have been called and sent by God. You see, John the Baptist knew he was sent by God. The introduction to John the Baptist says what? I, I asked you to read that verse with me. It says, there was a man sent from God and his name was John. <laughs> I'm just going to get that right there. <laughs> you see, John knew he was sent by God. He knew it from the day he was born till the day he died. Although he died in his 30s, from the day he was born to the day he died, he knew. He was not one of those who had Jesus dwell among him, but he did not know him. No, he was the one person on earth who would declare him. He was the one to give witness. He was the one to say, hey, 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 everybody, there is the Son of God. How did he know that? How did he live in a world that was created by God, but yet only one man knew him at the time? One man knew him at the time, and God chose him to introduce him to the rest of the world. Because he was born and created and, and sent and called by God for that one very purpose. And then finally, when, when Jesus Christ rolls up on the scene, he says, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And from that point forward, he says, I must decrease and he must increase. And he lived a short time after. A short time after, and his work was done. What a sacrifice for the call of God. Oh, my goodness. Will you accept the call? Will you be the one that hears the word and receives the word? Because to those who receive the word of God, to you he will give you the power to become the sons of God. To you who receive the word that is given. Amen. Amen. So this is John the Baptist here. John the Baptist. Huh. John the Baptist was a prophet. He announced the mission he had. And his mission was, well, was very simply, it was to, to liberate the human race. It was to free the human race of sin, of darkness. 
Amen. Of trouble, of sorrow. How did he do it? How did he free the human race? Very simply, everybody, just by the words that he spoke. I want you to know the power of the word that introduced him, the power of the word. How did he save the human race? He just he spoke. He opened up his mouth and he spoke. What did he speak? The word of God. Uh huh. And he, he, he led many to repentance. How did he lead many, many to repentance? Huh. By offering forgiveness. That's how he led many to repentance. He says, you're forgiven. What do you think? The water in the Jordan washed them and cleansed them from their sins? No. That was a ritual act. Because we're human beings. We need something to see, feel, touch to make it real. But that's, the water didn't cleanse them of the sin. The words cleansed them. Because nothing happens except by the word of God. You want to bring them to water and dunk them in water, that's fine. But the power of God is in the word, not in the water there. The water was a symbol of the word of God. It was a visual symbol of what just happened to him. Like though the word of God came out of John, John's mouth and, and saturated them all with heaven. And touched them all. And forgave them all. How, how, were, they, how were they forgiven? Very simply, they were offered forgiveness. Not, you know, when you're offered forgiveness, you know, you are free. From the transgression that you committed when you are offered forgiveness. When someone says, I forgive you. You are free. John the Baptist came to liberate the human race by offering forgiveness. Huh. Not to tell them of their sins. We all know our sins. You don't, don't, don't need you to tell me of my sins. You don't even know half of them. You're going to tell me of my sins? Give me a break. You have no clue what my sins are. They're greater than you think. But John didn't come to tell us of our sins, did he? No. No. He came to tell us of the mystery of the light which overpowers the darkness. What was the mystery of the light that the darkness cannot comprehend? Very simply, you're forgiven. You're loved. You are the child of God. And to as many as believe that, receive that. If you believe that you're forgiven, you have the power of God in your life, of a forgiven life. Would you like to receive that? Say yes. Anybody want to receive it? Say yes. Yes, I, I could shout that all day long. Yes, I receive that. It's that simple. I'll take it. <laughs> yes, I receive the word of God. I receive it now and I receive it again when I forget it. And I receive it again and again and again as often as I'm reminded of it. I will receive it again and again. Amen, everybody. Yeah, John the Baptist, he knew what his mission was. It was to liberate and set man free. Praise God. The Gospel of John portrays John the Baptist as a person who knows very well who he is. See, John the Baptist knew who he was. He didn't waver back and forth. Sometimes in life you don't know who you are and what your purpose is and what your meaning is. But I pray that God give you some kind of solidarity in your soul, some kind of unshakableness. Where if nothing else, I don't know if you're supposed to be a plumber, a painter, a carpenter, uh, an executive, I don't know. But one thing, that, and that always changes. But one thing that doesn't change, you are a child of God. You're a son and daughter of God. John knew who he was. He knew who he was. He knew why he was put upon the earth to set man free, to proclaim the Christ, if you will. He knew his call. And I dare to say that it's the call for us all, but some of us don't know it. Like God is among us and we don't even know him. Right? He came to his own and his own knew him not. But as many as believed received the power. Amen. As many that, 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 that believed received the power. Believe what? Very simply, just believe the word of God. You can go home just the same we came in, except you believe the word of God. No one's asking you to give anything, to do anything. No, just receive the word of God. That is the gift of God. Okay. I, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to receive it again and again and again. John knew who he was in this life. I want you to know who you are. Now your jobs may change and your finances may change. Your family may change. Your spouses may change. But your God will never change. Amen. Will never change. Amen. No matter what on this earth changes, you will always be a son and a daughter of God. And the only reason why you're upon this earth is because he called you. And he named you. And you do have divine purpose. Amen. Whether you live 30 years or 100 years or even less than that or longer than that. 
You have divine purpose. Amen. Amen. And John knew that. John knew that. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. <laughs> Amen. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. You know what I'm fascinated with is John was a great man. John the Baptist was a great man. He was the greatest of all the prophets that ever prophesied. We are told by heaven that he was greater than Isaiah. He was greater than Jeremiah. He was greater than Elijah, the prophet of fire. He was greater than them all. John the Baptist. Yeah. And Jesus wanted him that way. His father would go to church and, and, and faithfully serve in the church, but he went to the wilderness and he went to the desert and everybody left the church to go follow him. They all left the churches to say, where's, he, where's this guy taking us? He took him to the river. He was a strange guy, right? Amen. They say he wore some kind of rough clothing and he ate some kind of rough food. And he was a strange guy, real strange guy. But there was something about him. Everybody in church left to go see, and that's why the, the, the Jerusalem finally sent the, the priests, said, this church is empty, go down to the river and find out who this guy is, man. He was so great. He was so great. But when they asked them, when they finally came and asked them, they say, John, who are you? He said, very simply, I am not the Christ. He said, really, I'm no one. You think I'm great? He says, I'm no one and nothing compared to the one whom I am called by. For the one who comes after than I is mightier than I. He says, I'm not even worthy to be his servant, his slave. I'm not worthy to unlatch the sandals of his shoes. You think I'm something? <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. The Christ. Huh, extraordinary. That's how great Christ is in our life. I love the fact that he sent someone great to introduce him. Although, although the way the priests began to interrogate John, you know, the, the, the priests came to find out who John was, and, and, and they thought he was a crazy man, you know. They thought he was a crazy man. He ate locusts. He ate, hun well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, never really had locusts. Maybe some of you have tried. But I personally have not tried locusts. I know Bear has tried. He'll try anything. Uh, I mean, he works on a pirate ship. I mean, he, uh, but <laughs> and it says that he wore strange clothes. He wasn't a pirate, but he wore strange clothes. He, he wore. <laughs> you see, John the, the Baptist was born from a lineage of priests. His father was a priest and his great father was a priest or a pastor or a bishop or a pope, whatever you want to call him. And he was supposed to carry it on, man. He was the church embodied. And he came on the scene, he changed it all, and he went to the wilderness. They thought, they thought, surely this guy is mad. He went out of his mind. And uh, I think when you're called by God, you, you, you follow the beat of a different drum. And you don't live like everybody, everybody else is doing this and you're doing that. There's some kind of um, an allure to that, though, isn't there? I think there's some kind of an allure to that. Because, because he wasn't following the crowds. You see, the crowds, the crowds, and the crowds, we don't know who we are. That's why we're following the crowds. I don't know who we are. You ever been in a crowd, Phil? <laughs> Pastor Phil? And, and I have. And, and just, where are we going? I don't know. I'm just following the crowd. It's like, like, nobody knows where they're going. And you got this one lane that's empty. No one's in that lane. Well, the crowd's going this way. I'm not going in that lane. And we are. That was a shortcut right out of there. <laughs> but you see, John the Baptist, he, he followed the beat of a different drum. He listened to the voice of heaven. He knew who he was. He knew he was called by God. I don't know how he made a living or how he made a buck, but, but that wasn't his main purpose. So he had to make a dollar, you know. But that scripture doesn't even speak of how he made a dollar. It doesn't even speak of a house he lived in or, 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 or the donkey he rode on it. But, but, but he, they just said that he was a man called by God because that's ultimately what defined him. And the priest thought he was crazy. And they said, who are you? Who are you? I still believe that as followers of Christ, true followers of Christ, we are supposed to be peculiar upon this earth. 
I do not believe you're supposed to fit in with this world. I do not believe you're supposed to do what the masses do. I do not believe that you're here to be rich, famous, and successful. No, we are the children of God. I don't know if you'll be rich, famous, or successful, but that's not why we're here. We're called servants of God. We're, we've been called to liberate and save the human race. What is more important than that? Amen, everybody. John knew who he was, and he was not swayed from it. You know, that one moment in prison, he was swayed. Remember that one moment in prison, Pastor Phil, when they were going to cut his head off? And, he's, and, 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 and the disciples went to see him. What happened? What transpired? He says, are you the one? Are you the one? When he, when he gave his life for Jesus Christ and, and they were going to cut his head off because of it, he had that one moment and said, are you, are you the one? I want to make sure I'm dying for the right person. Are you the one? Or should we look for another? And Jesus answered him. He said, tell John. Tell John that he was a true faithful servant. Tell John that the blind see and the lame walk and the dead live again. Yeah. Tell John. Tell John he did it right. Tell John he did it right in this life. Amen, everybody. John the Baptist called by God and he knew it. And he knew it. Let me read this next passage. John chapter 1. Let's read them, some more of these verses. Let's do verse 9 here. And this is the record of John. When the Jews who were sent by, the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? They were asking John the Baptist, who are you? And he confessed and, and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ, right? And they asked him, what then? Art thou Elijah? And he said, I am not. Art thou the prophet? And he answered, no. They said unto him, who are you? Didn't even recognize him. Who are you? I don't know anybody truly called or, or sent by God. Who are you? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? And he simply said, John the Baptist simply said, you know what he said? He said, I, it's right there, guys. <laughs> I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Who are you, O oh mighty man? Who are you, O oh crazy man? Who are you, O oh strange one? Who are you, one called by God? Who are you? He says, I'm not the one. I'm not crazy either. He says, I, among, among us all this day, am perhaps the only one who knows who he is. All of you Levites and priests and, 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 and sages, and you don't even know who you are or why you are. He says, I know who I am. He says, I'm a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. He knew who he was. I'm a voice. And I must say when, that we are all called to be a voice. I say we are all called. I, I, I say some two more dedicated measures than others, I must say. Some of you will be called to live in the church. Some of you, some of you will be called to go to church, and some of you will be called to open up the church doors. <laughs> Amen. 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 Uh -huh. But we are all the voice. He said, I am the voice. Why did he say, I am the voice? It's the power of the word. He knew the power of the word. He says, I'm a voice. He says, you can listen to my voice, and if you receive the words, you receive the power to become. I'm a voice. And I think the encouragement from John the Baptist to us all, again, in the calling, however you see the calling, you could be called to, 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 to uh, work your, 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 your jobs as it is, or you might be called to leave your jobs as they are. I don't know, but you're still a voice, wherever you are. And what, what's the voice? It's, it's the word of God, because nothing is created without the word of God. You are a voice, man. You are a voice that, that gives life. You are a voice that gives forgiveness. Know who you are. I would say for crying out loud, know who you are and know why you are. Know who you are. Know that you are called by God. 
wherever you are, wherever you find yourself working or playing or relaxing, you are called by God. Wherever you shop, whatever you do, you are a voice. You are a voice crying out in a wilderness. Man, people, the world, the human race is desperate for light, for liberation. And you are a voice. Wherever you are, you are a voice shouting out in the wilderness. You are the voice. Speak a word. Nothing is going to happen in that person's life unless you speak a word. Amen. For nothing can be created without the word. Amen. Nothing. Amen. You are a voice to speak forgiveness, love, truth, righteousness. Amen. Amen. Tell someone they're a child of God. Tell someone they're loved. Tell someone they're beautiful. Tell someone they're forgiven. Tell someone. You are the voice. John knew who he was. He knew he was sent by God. And it was simply just a voice. But that voice liberated the human race. You are a voice. Yes. Yes. Sent by God. Now, what I find interesting, you look at that same passage... That's why I wanted you to repeat with me once again, verse 6. There was a man sent from God. His name was? John. You better not forget this, John. <laughs> Is there any other Johns? The other John absent? <laughs> there was a man sent by God. His name was? John. John. Now it says... It says that others came to question him. And in verse 19, it says, and this is the record of John. When the Jews and pre when the Jews send priests and Levites to go question him. See, the, the priests and, and, and the Levites, they were sent by man. They weren't sent by God. There was a man sent by God. His name was John. But there were also men sent by men. And they were the Levites, and they were the, the, the ones who were going to question and, 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 and uh, discover this quandary, if you will. And later, even later on, after they asked him all the questions, and they said, who art thou? They were still asking John, but who are you? And they, they said that we may give an answer to them that sent us. You see, there are them, some in this life that are not sent by God. Sometimes I fall into that category. Sometimes you fall into that category where you are sent and you are sent by man. You are sent by the will of man. You are sent to make a living, to get a buck. You are sent to do something, and you have forgotten that you are the voice. Of one crying in the wilderness. And for some reason I thought for, for one second I was the voice of one called to make a profit. Or called to increase my business. Or called to build a house or buy a car or something like that. And, and, and sometimes I forget that I'm called by God and not by man in this life. And, and I tell you what, when I think I'm called by man, I'm lost. I really don't even know who I am. I don't even know who I am. I believe that I'm supposed to be whatever you say I'm supposed to be. You say I'm supposed to be successful? Okay, let me try to be successful. Because why? Because man told me to be successful. Man tells me I'm supposed to be rich, and I'm going to try to be rich. Man says I'm supposed to be, I don't know, <laughs> what am I supposed to be? Responsible. So now I'm going to try to be responsible. Lord knows that's not going to happen. The Lord knows <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> When you're called by man, you truly do not know who you are because man will own you. They will own you. Amen. And you'll be confused and you'll chase everything. You'll, you'll chase the wind. But the one who is called by God, he is the only one in this whole scene, this whole scenario, the only one who knew who he was. Amen. He says, I am one called by God, sent by God. Whatever else I do in this life does not matter. I am the one sent by God and I got to speak to somebody today. I got to be a voice to someone today. I got to give somebody something today. I am called by God. I know we're tempted to live this life. I know we're tempted. Sometimes we're tempted to leave the call of God and to follow other things in this life. I know we're tempted. I know we're tempted. But this world, this world where we're sent to, to liberate, to bring freedom, to give, to give life and light. You are the light in the darkness. You are the life given to all, all of the human race. That is who you are. And we forget it. And then we become frustrated with life and drained by life. And betrayed by life. You will never be betrayed by God. Never. 
He will always be your God. He will always love you. He will always protect you. He will always be your best friend. He will always be on your side. He will never leave you or forsake you. Why do we dare follow the foolishness of men? Of their betrayals and their hard, hard life that they want to put on us. Why? 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 Because we don't know who we are. When you don't know who you are, you're chasing everything and you're never happy. Amen. And you never will be. Until you say, until we all say, there was a man sent by God and his name was. John. No, no, the only John can say that. You got to put your name in there now. <laughs> There was a man, there was a woman sent by God, and his name was Michael. Put your name in there. I'll give you another shot. Amen. There was a, a person, a man, a woman sent by God, and their name was Michael. Amen. You need to know who you are. Amen. Nobody in that scene knew who they were. They were sent by men. They did not know who they were. Amen. But when you're sent by God, you know who you are. I know, I know who I am, and I know who I am. Yeah. That's right. And that will never fail you. That call will never fail you. Will never fail you. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yes. Yes. John was sent by God. The Pharisees were. They were sent by man. What about us? Who were you sent by? When you go into the world Monday morning, who are you sent by? Just think about it. Just be okay. You can answer me too. Those are good answers. <laughs> God. God. Who were you sent by? When you get up tomorrow morning and you go, who are you sent by? Your boss? Your husband? Your wife? Who are you sent by? And what, and what are you going to do that day? I'm sent by God to give the word of God. I don't know about the rest of the day, but I know that's true. Amen. The rest of the day is questionable. And it's outside of my power. I might become a, a successful millionaire or I might be broke as a joke and lose everything. I, I don't know. But I know this. I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness. I know this. I, I, I know this. Though the mountains fall and, and, and the seas dry up, I know that I am one sent by God. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist was the only one who knew who he was. Everyone else was sent by man. I don't want to be sent by man. And sometimes the one that sends me is me, and sometimes the one that sends you is you. Because what you think you're supposed to do, what you think you have to do, because of the, I don't know, the riches of this world, perhaps, that we want so, so badly. Why? Why? I understand why, but I just, <laughs> just got to ask him, why? Not at the cost of losing who you are. Everything that's true and sure and right. So who tells you what to do? And you must always recognize this. It's riskier to be sent by God. It's riskier to be sent by God. But it's sure and it's true. That's why in John the Baptist's last days, he said to Jesus, he said, he says, are you the one? Or do I look for another? And then he gladly gave his life. It said, for the joy set before him, Jesus went to the cross. I, I pray, I ask God, that we would learn to gladly give our life for Christ. That we would know that's the most beautiful thing in this world. That we are sent by God. May we trade it for nothing. May you trade it for nothing. Because there's nothing but emptiness to trade it for. Who was it, pastor, who was it that traded his birthright for nothing? Is Esau. He traded his birthright for nothing. Amen, everybody. Amen. Yeah. Who were you? What we got over there? Got some noise in to shut down? Oh, that's the back room there. Is that, is that the children back there? Hey, that's the children back there. <laughs> Yeah, let them be taught and trained of God. We all need to go in there for a second. <laughs> yeah. Some of us need to start all over, man. <laughs> You're not start all over. No, that's good. That's good. So John 1, 13 says this, which was born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I want you to know this. You are not born by the will of man. You are born by the will of God. 
You were put upon this earth for, for great reason, everybody. For great reason. Who are you? I pray that you would know who you are. I am a man. I am a woman sent by God. And my name is John. <laughs> Say that to yourself. I believe that verse is touched by God. There was a man sent by God, and his name was John. You, you can just say that first if you want. You could use your name. It makes no difference. I, I prefer the King James Version. There was a man sent by God. I will say that, and his name was John. There was a man sent by God. No one else knew who they were. They didn't know who John was. John knew who John was. I'm a man sent by God. I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. I am one voice. What saved everybody from that sin that day? What caused everyone to, to repent that day? Not the water. The water cleansed nobody. The words that John spoke, because they were the words of God. The words cleansed them. The words that John spoke brought light, brought life, and I left the darkness in a quandary. Nobody could figure him out. <laughs> That's kind of beautiful, don't you think? That's kind of beautiful. I end with this, everybody. You ready? There was a man <laughs> sent by God, and his name was John. <laughs> God bless you all. Praise and worship team. Watch them all forward. All right, watch you all stand. God bless you. Amen. Don't you feel that when you sing that song, when you say Jesus? Amen. Well, bless the Lord. Well, uh, I pray you heard that word. I heard it. You know, I'm driving down from Tampa this morning. That's, I had anticipation. That was actually my prayer. I'm like, Lord, what are you going to tell me today? I don't know about you, but like when I church, Lord, what are you going to tell me today? I have anticipation. I have an expectation. You know, you mentioned Hannah, and Hannah, of course, dedicated her son, Samuel. Samuel was her son. And when she dedicated him, you know, he was a young boy. You know, usually he was 13 when they uh, began their service. And can you imagine dropping off your 13-year-old son to church? And it says Samuel lived in the church. Like, he slept in the sanctuary. Eli was the priest at the time, and he was asleep in the sanctuary by himself. And he heard Samuel. He thought Eli was calling him. He ran out to see Eli. He said, you call me? I didn't call you. <laughs> Go back to bed. He went. That happened three times. Third time, Eli said, listen, if you hear that again, ask the Lord. You tell him, speak, for your servant is listening. Sure enough, he went, laid back down, fell asleep. <laughs> he heard his name again, Samuel. And that's exactly what he said. Lord, he said, speak, for your servant is listening. He told Samuel, I'm doing a new thing. The King James says that when he would speak, that ears would tingle. Ears would tingle. Not be condemned. Not be upset. Not worry. There'd be an anticipation. What, what are you saying? I pray your ears tingle, man. And notice he called them. He called his name. He didn't say, hey, you. He called his name Samuel, just like he called John. Why? Because he had something to tell him. <laughs> so that you can go tell someone else and cause their ears to tingle. Like maybe God really does love them. Like maybe God really does forgive them. Man, don't that cause the ears to tingle? Amen. I think it does. <laughs> Let's go before the Lord. Lord, we are, of course, grateful today, Lord God, to always be in your house, Lord, to worship, Lord. We thank you for the family that you brought here today. And yes, Lord, we believe you called us by name, Lord God. You know us each personally, Lord God. You, it says that you knew us before we were even formed. You knew us. That can only be a loving father that knows what he's going to do with his child. So we thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. And we thank you for the word that you gave us this morning, Lord God, because you call us, Lord God. We're called by you, Lord, not by man. You call us, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, that we'll say, speak, Lord. <laughs> Your servant is listening. We want a word, Lord God. We want to be able to share that word so that we would cause others to have anticipation to hear you and to know you, Lord, and to experience your love in a whole new way, Lord God. 
So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you're preparing, Lord God. We know that we are in this season, Lord God. We're grateful for all the gifts that you've given us, Lord, for one another, for your word, and, of course, for your son, Jesus Christ, Lord God. So we pray your blessings on all today, the day, and pray, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to fill us with your love. It's in your name we pray. Amen.